Hey, hey, hey guys, this is Hawkeye and I am back with Fishing Planet and we are continuing the 4th of July event even though it has passed as far as 4th of July. It will continue on for a few more days. Let me check to make it set, set for sure. five more days. So it will continue until the 9th. So you still got time to complete this if you so wish to do so. I do want to go ahead and show you guys that I am about to complete this Cannonball Salute mission. I'm going to celebrate the beginning of this episode with the Cannonball Salute and get my fire cannon reel there and some bait coins. So let's go ahead and fire that off. And there it is. I didn't get anything for it, but I did get that, so that's what I wanted. I didn't realize it was shaped like a cannonball. <laughs> I can see it now. Picture is too small. Mission accomplished, Cannonball Salute, Happy Independence Day America. 1776 cash, 13 bait coins. I wish it was uh, more than that though. Yeah, I had I heard some complaints about the final treasure and yeah, I do agree with the the guys about it could have been better. Honestly, yeah, Fishing Planet is probably one of the best fishing simulators out but they do like to make their money and that's pretty much what I'm gonna say yeah they could have given us a little bit more for that so I think what they should have done is they should have given us 1776 bait coins for the final treasure that would have been sufficient considering what it cost to get an unlimited license that would have made it worth it worthwhile and you know some of the other stuff would have been nice to get too but I do do the you know when I do this event guys I'm not doing it to get a whole bunch of goodies I've already gotten what I need to get I'm doing this because a lot of you you know they you want to see just how to to find these fish where to find them that type of thing you all want to take part in the event as well and I do it because of the challenge, mainly. I just want to see if I can do it. Anyway, guys, the next two fish that we're going to be tackling are only here at Quanchkin. Again, to make myself clear, I am not following these coordinates missions in order. I don't have to. You guys do, unfortunately, if you're doing this for the first time. The only reason I'm doing that is again to save travel time and in many cases I don't have unlimited licenses for all the waterways. They're just too daggone expensive. But anyway, let me go ahead and go to my inventory here. Actually first let's go to the missions and the completed ones. The two that we're going to be after is going to be from the Fish Tag Coordinates 4 mission and that is the largemouth bass, historic largemouth bass using a bullfrog popper. And the second one is actually from the fish tag coordinates 5. It's the hist historic chain pickerel using the eagle spoon 5 8 ounce. And that's only the, the only two for here. So we're going to go back to the map. We wanted to start off here at... Um, well, you could either start off here or over here, but it actually here is better because it gets you closer to where the chain pick rope can be caught. And let's go ahead and jump in here. It's now basically I start over there at the shack and I walked all the way down here. Now I have caught quite a few chain picker over here, and there's a couple other good spots that we can try. So if we don't get one here, we can move down to one of those. 
Another thing is, I believe I've discovered that they do bite better on non-P periods. It's not that they bite better, it's just that you're not getting all kinds of, you're not getting all the unhistoric fish or non-historic fish. So, whether we should advance time, I'm not sure, but it might not be a bad idea. We might have a better chance of getting them. So, let me go ahead and advance time to 11 a.m. since that is not a peak. And hopefully that will increase our odds of getting the historic chain pickerel. Now that one is the one I believe we have to use the eagle spoon for. And there's like a little channels between these lily pads that you can fish through. This seems like an odd lure to use. It seems like for pickerel they tend to really like the spinners but we'll use it I need to speed that up a little bit I didn't realize I had it only in a one notch If we don't catch anything here, in a, nope, see, and I think that's exactly what we're after. It looks like one, from what I can tell. Yep, there you go. That fast. And you can see his little medallion. Now they're not real big, but when we get to St. Croix, you're going to see some big fellas. The historic muskie does get pretty big. And let me get a picture of him just, just for posterior. <laughs> I always like to say that. I don't know who said it first, but I always thought it was funny. There we go. We'll keep him, but let me go ahead and show you, oh, Washington's hat. I didn't know I was going to get a reward. Okay, I'll take Washington's hat. History Catcher 3. This Independence Day, you can try your luck at landing some of the oldest fish alive, tagged with special rings and released into lakes and rivers in North America 200 years ago to honor the 20th anniversary of USA Independence. 50 bait coins. Now that was worth it. I'll take 50 bay coins, without a doubt. Damn. <laughs> That's probably the last of the of those type of things that we can do, but I was not expecting that in the least. Alright, let me show you this other good spot for the chain pickerel real quick. Let's see. You gotta come all the way down here, past this great big stump. There's there's already a marker there. That might, actually might be a marker for historic chain pickerel, but uh, excuse me, <laughs> that bird just ran right over me. All right, let me see what that is. Just I'm just curious. Let's see. Nope, no fish data. I guess I was just marking. There is a hole right there, by the way. So it's possible that that's what I was marking. But right through here, this is another good spot. But I usually get the chain pickerel here with spinners. With a real slow retrieve. And if you put a red or white tail on it, it usually increases your odds, but they like a slow presentation with spinners for some reason. I'm only gonna try this a few times, but if we not you know, if we don't get anything right away, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the to the largemouth bass. Largemouth bass. I'm gonna try fishing for them in my unique largemouth bass spot 
And for that, you normally use a bullfrog popper, but we have a special kind of bullfrog popper, a historic one. So, yeah, let's try it again, just to see. Might need to get closer to those lily pads, actually. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to slide down a little bit and reel it in this way. Obviously, you can catch the historic fish with other lures and other baits, but they won't count. Because I've already accomplished that a few times. Well. <laughs> There's the historic largemouth bass, guys. He didn't count, though. He did not count. And actually, I was kind of surprised I caught him here. But I caught him with the wrong lure, so that wouldn't have count if we were doing the mission. But, there's another spot for one. That just sounded, that was kind of strange. Yeah, I think I'm going to try one more time. Yeah, I love the bullfrog poppers because they work so well here. Most everything else gets snagged, but that does not. And the largemouth bass just go for it constantly. But yeah, as you can tell, we're definitely doing better with the historic on the non-peak times. Stick to the non-peak times, guys. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and go on, because... We could actually get this done a little bit faster today. Actually, let's just do this. Let me jump. Let's just do this. Let me jump through the map. And we went to walk all the way. Yeah, where I'm trying to get to is on this side of things. And I'm looking primarily for this bunch of lily pads, which would normally be a place you would not want to fish. Right now this is the perfect place to fish because normally this would be snag central but now with this the bullfrog popper. Now there is another version of this and it is not red white and blue but you can use it and it's just as effective as this one but this one is what we need for the largemouth historic bass. And if you're doing it during the peak, this is how you catch the unique versions. I usually put it at three notches and pop it through here. But it won't snag. So it allows you access to areas where fish are that normally you can't get to. There we go. I knew it was just a matter of time. Oh wow. Yeah, he's he's a hefty son of a gun. Come on. Sorry about my dogs, guys. There's the historic largemouth bass. Yet another one. Only this time it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if we can't get a good picture of him let's see go ahead and get a I'm surprised I'm holding him up I thought I might hold him in my lap but yeah lighting is not great that's a strange sounding frog isn't it all right, there they are. Historic largemouth bass.
Alright guys, that is everything that you can get at Quanchkin. And yeah, let me show you that other spot that's really good for not only the historic... Why is there a rocking chair there? I don't remember that ever being there. But it's actually the same spot that we were earlier, or at least sort of. But if you're going after uniques sometime later on, you basically want to go through these lily pads here, but you need to position yourself over on this side. I would get myself either actually right at this bend and then cast it right over this way. Right through there. And you can usually get a unique. Over there I have more luck getting them, but I've gotten them here as well. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe. And we will be back with another episode of Fishing Planet. And let me take a look here real quick before we end this. What we are going to be going after next... Under fish, to, fish tag coordinates 4, we need to go after, let's see, I believe we have to go to St. Croix next. So we need to catch the historic white bass with the old glory grub again, so we're bringing that one back. And I believe it's the historic muskie, yes, using striped jerk bait. One and one half ounce, six aught, that's a big hook too. Now that's what we do at St. Croix. Now from there, we'll be going to San Joaquin in California. There we need to get the historic steelhead trout. And I think that might be it. Nope, historic striped bass. So the historic striped bass and historic steelhead trout. And there, from there to Kanik Creek, Alaska, for the historic bull trout and the historic Chinook salmon using the grizzly claw bullet spinner. And that will be the end of things. There are no more missions after that, and no more historic fish. So, anyway, guys, uh, as I said before, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll be back with another episode of Fishing Planet Classic. So until then, guys, as I always say, aim straight, cast far, and have fun, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.